In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondocast. podcast of vundablog.com the home of whatever the podcast that after finally 104 episodes can figure out how to produce four podcasts in one month oh my gee it took that long but we have just unlocked that this january 2018 in your face one week we did it just one month down we just had to stockpile three <laughs> Eleven to go. To figure it out. Figure but we it. still have a couple more in the bank. Yeah. And I plan to bank a couple more podcasts with Mr. J. And uh, hopefully this year we can produce a full range of high quality nerd discussions for your ears. I am your host, Stephen. And with me, this show is the ever wonderful Danielle. How are you doing, Danielle? I'm great. So, like, have we figured out our, sh- our like, things or things like wrestling and, like, pop culture, right? And, like... Well, yeah, I talk about wrestling with Derek. Mm-hmm. On, like, usually. And Mr. J, you talk about pop culture. And then yeah. me, you talk about pop culture. Yeah, but you, it's more film specifically. Yes. And with Mr. J... It's more comic book. It's more comic book based oriented but, that's but we good. also too also talk about comic books as well but like obviously. not as much though but we do but like i don't read as much com- as many yeah, comics yeah but as i mean Mr. like J you know we talk about comic movies and stuff yeah yeah and then with I'm more of a with man undress time. we kind of go everywhere but we also look at a lot of like we talk about a lot of older well i think it's movie things yeah and you also like i don't know I, and you and me talk about horror and a lot. i think it's good because i mean what can i say this he's your he's your why are you making it sound like we're I don't know. Are you making it sound like he's my boyfriend? No, he's, he's your film industry connect. I mean, like, he actually is well, yeah, someone who actively in working film, in, in the, the film, film industry, industry right now in 2018. Yeah, that, is, that is a true And fact. so I think that's an interesting perspective to have because he actually is trying to, like, make it, and he's, like, a working stiff. He's not, like, you know, super famous. He's, like, known, and he's that getting there, and fact. he's growing. Yeah, that so it's good. You fact. see the working stiff get the experience out of the people. I think that's, like, such a thing that's, like, big now is, like, this transparency of the film industry, even though, like... You know what's funny to me is I feel like they've kind of developed this, like, half transparency, Mm -hmm. half not, because there's still a bunch of stuff that goes on in the film industry that people don't understand, like, you know. What do you mean, like, production? Like, yeah, like, no, little things, like, the other day, especially for people who don't really, like, notice, like, like, today, for instance, in a group that I'm in, they were, like... Oh my god, I really want, like... And this was about The Last Jedi, of course, in Star Wars. And they're like, I really would like it if, um, like, Adam Driver and, like, Daisy Ridley were, like, in more interviews together and stuff like that. I don't understand. I feel like Adam, like, never does interviews. And then I had to, like, explain to them, like, you do know that, like, this is, like, the most annoying part of that for an actor, like, because... Because, no, because most people don't understand that, like, they sit, they sit in a room, they sit in a room, a hundred people walk in the room, with five minutes a piece, mm-hmm. and they ask them the same six questions, and they have to have the same amount of enthusiasm from mm-hmm. six in the morning till three o'clock in the afternoon mm-hmm. for the same six questions, and like smile, and you know, it's like that's something that's really like I don't know, like th- those are the things that's like that's annoying. And I'm of course like I'm looking at it from the outside perspective because if I wasn't a big movie, I'd be like, 
my first time around, no, but I'd be like, from, yeah! No, but from anybody's perspective, if mm-hmm. at work they told you that, guess what? You have 50 meetings today. Yeah. And they're going to, to be ask the same you thing. Yeah. mostly the same questions mm-hmm. over and over again. Mm-hmm. And remember, every time you're being recorded. Yeah. Both audio and visual. And you must so be you as have to happy keep it and, and the, as, and, yeah. as engaging as possible. Mm-hmm. Because this is the make or break time for the movie. Mm-hmm. If you... For, or the presentation. If, if you have some sort of gaff in this uh, junket, it's going to become the top story in this entire movie. And I mean, we see mm-hmm. that. Like, for instance, like Jeremy Renner, when Jeremy Renner like was doing the press for um, Hansel and Gretel, and he like knew it was a big old fucking joke. Like, he was like... Yeah. Like he didn't give a shit, and it was like such yeah. a big deal to people. And then the uh, and then what? Oh, no! Um, the, the one that ruined everyone was Chris Evans. No, no, no I was thinking. No? I was thinking of Ben Affleck after BVS DOJ. Oh God! That they were yeah. able to put the sound of the silence, sound of silence, sound of silence to him thinking because about the he was just reviews. hearing the news that the critics' reviews weren't that good, yeah. and he was trying to compose. Like, so imagine how. Like, I just to me. And especially since the fact that, like, he did it the first time around The Force Awakens. And you could totally tell when you look at the press back then, he was all like, I knew at this. And he Adam still, Driver. he still, yeah, He's he still didn't that. love it. Like, but he, like, accepted it more. Now, this time around, it's like, he did as much as he was contractually obligated to do. Mm-hmm. And then he moved the fuck on. Plus, like, he was doing a movie and stuff like that. But it's just, it's funny to me because, like, that's, those are the kinds of things that, like, People don't pay attention. They pay attention to so much, but they don't pay attention to like those little annoying things. Because I don't know, from everyone's perspective, is if you're an actor in a big movie, you're super fancy and and you should shut no, the fuck you're, up. You're and you should never have any feelings. millions of dollars. Yeah. You should be grateful, grateful for every moment, for every moment, even the shitty ones and it's or like, even the annoying ones. The other thing too about that whole thing is that it's not just you're in that thing in that room for one day. But you're no. in that room for one day, and then they're flying, flying you, you everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. You're not having time to, I assume, acclimate. See your family. See your family, etc. Et like, yeah. You know, you're, you're deprived I would honestly, of all the comforts. I would honestly, like, be really grumpy if I was yeah. flown all over the place for, like, weeks and I didn't get to see my dogs. Like, I would be on Carrie yeah. Fisher's level yeah. legit. I would make all four of my dogs yeah. fucking service animals. Yeah. I'd be like, I have a service pack. <laughs> they must come with yeah. me at all times. This is my emotional support pack. This is my emotional support pack. I w- I'm not even kidding. Like, I would be like, nah, all four dogs are coming, man. Of course, if you want to see our dogs, you can go to Instagram, at Duke Zena Life, and you can see all of Danielle's hounds in their yes. adorable glory. The hounds. Um, I'm not sure if we talked about this on the podcast yet. I don't think we did. But your ingenious idea. What was my ingenious which idea? Which is sort of based on what you were just saying. Oh, yeah. Is if Danielle had a billion dollars. Oh, yeah. She would take a portion of that billion dollars, a we hundred million yes, dollars on it. Yes, yes, I would. Okay, go, go, pitch it, go. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Is that a lot of times when I talk about, like, having lots of money... I would basically be like villain. like Loki, like Loki. You'd I think evil. I would cause no. I would not be You'd evil. Be Doctor Evil. I would cause. You'd have a volcano. I would with cause a skull mine. Into it. No, stop. You would. I no. I've realized that my type of super villainy would be really more along the lines of like trickery, mischief, like, mischief. Yeah, like what a naughty caprice, as Pat Oswalt likes so, to say. So I her prank on the world. My prank on the world would be if I had a billion dollars right now and I could give away a hundred million of it, I would go to the most angry, annoying fanboy that could exist that's hated on TLJ we just, we, we, for weeks We'd now. hire a team to comb Reddit. Yeah. And find the most find vitriolic the fool. The most vitriolic fool. And I would go to him and I would say, Sir, I have a hundred... Because it's going to be a sir. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It's a man. It's probably a big guy. It's probably a 14-year-old man. Actually, no. Fuck that. It's probably a 44-year-old man. Anyway, um, I'm going to go to him and I'm like, sir, I have $100 million for you. Make the movie you want to see, bro. 
You can't call it Star Wars because I don't have enough money to <laughs> stave off Disney's fucking what? lawsuit. I'm doing Knights of the Old Republic as it was meant to be. Seen. Like, I don't know, man. Maybe if I had enough money, I could pay Disney off. Maybe I could be like, Disney, let me just see how this works because it's going to be really funny. Just let me do it. But like, It's EU. It's Legends. It's no Legends. Yeah, don't worry. It's EU. It's, 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 a, par- it's a film parody. Yeah. Um, I would be like, Here's- This is my $100 million Boba Fett fan film. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. It's a fan film. It's a hundred million dollar fan film. It will not get distribution. So no, no, the whole point. No, I thought the whole original point when we had this discussion uh-huh. was that they have to go through like the entire filmmaking. They do process, but you're so right. It has to get no, released. No, 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 no. It has but to be a reality no, no, show. No, 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 no. It has to get the whole thing. But it, they can have a re- no. They can have a reality show, but it will not be released because that's where that's life. usually yeah. where you get sued. Is if so you're you try to distribute it. Dollars. Of course. Well, it'll only be a fan. I'm film losing hundred million dollars anyway. If, if this poor vitriolic fool doesn't have an original concept, of course. Okay. But he if, he, if he's sitting on the Matrix, come on, we're, we're good to go. Uh, this is my thing. Okay, so anyway, so if I give this guy $100 million and I say, make the movie you want to see, sir, you do what you want, you have to do it all yourself. I want to see, because here's the thing, either way, I win, like Steven said, because either A, we're gonna film it. somehow we're gonna he watch magically it break makes down. a fucking genius movie, yeah. he's the next fucking... Tarantino, next Nolan, Tarantino, whatever. Citizen Kane, or I don't know, so he's makes Citizen Kane... I win because I can sell that shit and, and make it. another yeah. exactly and make another two hundred million dollars or whatever, and I will be the one who discovered Rodney Tottenhot. The f- you know what I mean, like whatever. Because he said Ghostbusters twenty sixteen is poo ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, or I watch this wholly inexperienced person crack under the pressure and it's like this terrible psychological experiment that I sit watching cackling from a room somewhere. I just like I, I, I just assumed that it would end after like three weeks with him, oh, yeah. with him like in a porta potty just like crying. He would spend all that money then, on one special effect. And then you come into the porta potty and you're like you know that, it's right? okay, Jeff. Yeah. You know it's that, right? right? You know he would spend all that money on one special yeah. And they have to spend the money. They can't just keep it. You can't run off to yeah. Bermuda. And I would put security yeah. on his yeah. ass so he'd never be able to leave. You have, you have to take, like, a, a grand top. That's it. That's your paycheck. You're done. No, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Not even. I would legit, though, have security on him. Money's so got to be on run. screen. I would, have, I would have, like, a mafia type of yeah, mafia security people. detail on him. But I do. I want to do it because I, I... You just get to a point where, look, I get it. People have been complaining since the beginning of time. This is what humanity does. I'm complaining right now. So really, I mean, shut the fuck up for me. Like, (laughs) you know? So really, back to myself. Back to myself. Fuck you. But like, it just gets to a point where, like Steven and I were talking about this the other day. We did one podcast, a two hour podcast on how much we really didn't like Alien Covenant and how much it disappointed us, right? And the mummy. And the mummy. Combined. Combined. We did a two hour podcast. And then you know what we did? We moved on with our fucking lives. We never talked about those movies the rest of the summer. We never talked about those movies again. Um, like, I'm not, I'm not saying that if I would truly was upset at, at Star Wars not being what I expected. I mean, but I'm even thinking back to Phantom Menace. I remember not liking Phantom Menace a lot. It was boring and terrible. But I didn't spend... Like, I, every time someone brought it up, I'd be like, Bleh. But, like, I never, yeah. like, spent moments looking around for opportunities at every point to fucking complain and bitch about that movie. I was just like, um, it was not very good, and I'm disappointed, but I'll move on with my fucking life. You know, like, I just, it's, to me, it's fascinating, because there are some people that every day, you have to understand, there are people that exist in this crazy, strange, like, like, mirror universe where everybody's excited like for instance people who ship Ray and Kylo like the Raylo group just as, just as, just as an example we're sitting there on Tumblr and Twitter and Instagram like all excited yay Ray and Kylo like happy positive emotions mm-hmm. and there are, is literally an entire other side to that that spend all of their time Anti- well not all of their time but a, a, a pretty big portion of their time completely hating and tearing it down. The to, antis. And the anti. yeah, we call them the antis, to the point where, like, they are there in every post, sharing it, screenshotting them, writing essays, like, we're writing essays about how much we love something, and they're writing essays about how much they hate us for loving something. It's so bizarre. Like, I just, 
I guess I just don't see the point in wasting that much energy. And I, I feel like they have to, like, to convince themselves that it's worth all that energy, they have to kind of garner up these, like, we are doing the Lord's work by showing you how abusive and terrible this thing is. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they drum up this kind of, like, faux, you know, political thing that they're doing with it. And it, and it just it really just boils down to... Hey, especially for girls. Hey, girls, you're stupid for liking them. Because so much of it is geared towards girls. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of Tumblr is female-centric. Yeah. A lot of Instagram and Twitter is female-centric. Well, I think that... Like, it is so geared towards women and what they like. I'm not saying that guys don't shit on fucking shit all the time. But, like, seriously, especially with this. But, yeah, so in the same, t same vein, there are people who really liked The Last Jedi as a whole. Nothing to do with anything shippy, whatever. And then there are people who literally spend an active amount of their time every day hating on it. Who people who go to every Ryan Johnson tweet about Star Wars and fucking go, hey, you suck. And I just, I, I guess I just really don't understand spending that much of my energy on it like that. Like, I really don't get it. I understand not liking something. I understand complaining about it to an extent. But there's, like, an extent and then there's, like... Oh, bro, are you okay? Like, meanwhile, Emperor Palpatine is sitting on Reddit, like, Ooh. tear them down, Ooh. Do let it. the hate flow through. Do it. It really is this kind Tell of the like, I, 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 you know, and I know they must be getting some sort of like emotional reward from this because, like, why would you continue to do this if you weren't getting something from yeah. it? I guess it's the attention of like oh my god because yeah i mean when they complain someone else complains back at them and then they fight like, like, like that's why i, I don't bother I, I imagine that it's just they're so uh i guess like starved for human interaction that's the only dialogue they feel they can like feel in control of i guess i mean in a way that that I guess it's satisfying. I don't know. I, 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 that's the thing. It's weird. I don't even want to judge in that way. I don't want... Because then that makes me sound like I'm being pretentious or superior. I don't want to look at it that way. Let's just look at it like the nitty gritty of humanity. I really have to know what... Okay, human beings like to do things for two reasons. It makes them feel good or it makes them feel right. And usually the, the reason why it's right, some, they makes them feel right is because being right makes people feel good. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's kind of like... This must be making them feel good. Like, this must be making them feel good. Yeah. Because there's no other reason why or you would devote maybe, so much maybe energy it's to just, it. Maybe it's, it's a process. So they, they shit on these people. Then they go to the people that, you know, agree with their opinion and show them how well they shit on other people. I, I don't know. Like, you know, and they can it's, celebrate with those other strange. antis or it's other very strange. assholes. I don't know. It's very strange to me. Like, it just, I, I guess. I, they form their own community. They really yeah, do. Yeah, their own sub-community. But, just, you know, it's their own community. It's their own thing. I, just, I don't understand it because, to me, devoting that much time to something I don't like would really, like... And it's not... Break the, our spirits. It would just yeah, it would really make me unhappy and bitter. And this is not the same thing as, like, hating on... Po like, getting angry about politics. Because that's, like, a every day of your life. I'm talking yeah. about... What in the world does The Last Jedi not being the movie you wanted it to be have anything to do with your life? Mm -hmm. Like, like does it really... Maybe it does. Maybe it really upsets them. Maybe it really bummed them out. Maybe they were, like, right about to jump off a cliff and then The Last Jedi was coming out and they're like, well, I gotta hold on for that. And now they're like, well, why am I even here? I don't know. Well, then go back to the fucking cliff. Oh, shit. Well, no, no. I'm just saying go back to the cliff. And meditate and force project yourself oh, okay. into the future. Let's not encourage anybody. Okay. I'm not going to sit next. Force project yourself into the future at episode 9 and watch Ray and Kylo Ren have sex. But they don't even want... That's the thing. That now they... I think that's... Maybe that's other part of the problem too is that now they're so upset because they feel like they're not going to get anything they wanted because they didn't get anything they wanted here. So, like, the next movie, unless it totally yeah. just does a 180, which it's not going to, it's going to continue on the well, thread that think, Ryan Johnson has pulled and they don't I, like that. I think that they're... I think that maybe one of their sources of criticism is that they're afraid that, you know, for them, Star Wars is supposed to be, like, you know, 
twenty to thirty percent lightsaber swingy swingy bang bang, mm-hmm. and they're worried it's gonna be too much kiss kiss bang bang. That is what's you know so. What I mean? f- but that's what's so funny to me. Silly. Is that so many? Maybe I'm. Maybe the world has changed, but I remember how vehemently they hated the prequels. And the prequels were a lot of lightsaber swingy swingy. No, but the day the Force Awakens trailer came out, a fucking a bunch of people stood up and just decided that they it's it. okay now to say we like the prequels. Yes, you know what All I mean. All of a sudden, like, it's like now there was a new yeah. new people to shit on. They were like, we can stand proud. Yeah. And you, we are but, not the lowest of the and, low. And here's the thing. And we can but, rise above them and at least. here's the thing is that I've always been, I have always been, even though I, I didn't like the execution of the prequels, I've always defended the essential storyline. The essence. The, of the essence story of line. the storyline. Yeah. Because I liked it. I, I thought, I liked it in, in that, like, I thought it was very tragic and sad and meaningful. And I think that it, it, it really did, when you look between, you know, like the kind of nonsense you see a very emotional story about Anakin Skywalker. Like, I don't see how you could watch the prequels and then walk out of there and not feel just a genuine sadness for Darth Vader. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no matter how scary he is or violent he is, I just really felt a genuine horror for him. Like, what he went through was monstrous, and, like, what he did was monstrous, but, like, what he lost was monstrous, and, like, I just, yeah, like, it just sucks, because it's, like, it's it's like the essential idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Everything he did was just a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm, me and Danny have uh, still yet been processing The Last Jedi, mm-hmm. and one of the things we've been doing to process is watching, uh... Rebels. W- Rebels, season... Star Wars. Uh, we're going through season one now. Mm-hmm. And we also have gotten into uh, the Wayward Jedi YouTube videos. Yeah, oh yeah, we should shout him. out to people that we like. Wayward Jedi, and then um, and on... we were just saw Wayward Jedi recommended we watch the Mortis arc of the Clone yeah. Wars, and we just saw that, and that was the bomb dot com. Also, shout out to Tumblr, um, Tumblr Meta Writers, uh, Otzi. I never know if I pronounce this right. Otzi O H T Z E, and Ashes for Foxes, and uh, everyone really, and then even um. Uh, I also have a friend who wrote an amazing music blog that I want to shout out because I'm going to do it. She's doing it. Uh, her blog is Enjoy All Need Nothing Dash Blog. That's a very long name. Um, her name is Christy on Tumblr, but Enjoy Everything Need Nothing is her Tumblr title. Um, she is cool because she does music composition, and so she dissected the. Um, music in The Last Jedi. She did a part one. She's going to do a part two because it's obviously it's very lengthy and complicated. And yeah, she's it's really cool. I, I, all these... She's been breaking it down. She's, she's been breaking it down. And I, I just, I love, like, all of these people have been, like, opening my eyes. And this is the thing. I very much protected myself for a very long time against shipping because Raylo, because I didn't want to get my heart broken. So these people have been in the, the swamp, the trenches, since 2015. And apparently it was a much uglier place on Tumblr in 2015 for people who like this. So, like, I, you know, I have, I kept myself away because I hate liking a ship that's going to break my fucking heart. Like, I can't, it's just hard. Um, now it's too late because I, you know, I was kind of, like, keeping it at an arm's length. Like, I was kind of reading stuff about it, but I wasn't now going too crazy. Late. Now I'm pregnant. Yeah, the now I'm pregnant. The pregnant, I'm pregnant with the ship. No, yeah, now that The Last Jedi has happened, and I really see the progression of the relationship, and the fact that they are willing to do it, and they are willing to be brave enough to do it, I'm, like, totally 100% dead. It's over. Like, I'm just, anyway. But, like, so, but so many people have been writing amazing, like, metas and essays and stuff, dissecting, like, the storylines, and it's, I mean, especially from a Ray and Kylo perspective, but not even just about a romantic perspective. Like, honestly, just because no matter what people want to think, Ray and Kylo Ren are the center of the story. They absolutely are. The relationship between Ray and Kylo Ren and the light side and the dark side are the central to the story. They are the new Luke and Darth Vader. They are the new yeah. Anakin and, you know what I mean? Whatever. And yeah, they, they yeah. are. Like, they're the new central idea to the story. So it's really cool to read all these like essays dissecting it like that way. So I want to just give a shout out to that. It's been very fun to read all these things, especially as an English major. Like it's like, Ooh, look, literary analysis. And that's, what's really fun. That's another thing too, is that I felt like a lot of negative 
criticism has been very much just like angry yelling like it was mm-hmm. stupid cuz why and like a lot of the love I'm serious and a lot of the love that I've seen has been so detailed and beautiful and like w- like wonderfully complex, complex yeah. and full of like research that they don't need to be doing like they're writing theses for things that don't m- won't matter in 15 years like that's beautiful like to mm-hmm. me that's very beautiful I totally have done that. I have been no, that person, and it's, and it's very inspiring to. I love that part to of fandom. See that it's possible for there to be something that you know you everyone fun. connects to and just is inspired by. Yeah, and I, you know? I like it inspires me. I've been writing little things. I've been writing little essays. I haven't been doing theses mostly because I haven't had any fucking time to sit down and read fifty books. Um, but, like, I will, and, you know, but who knows? And then the thing about it is, too, is that just... What's your Tumblr? My there's Tumblr? There's a link on the, on the, on the yeah, fundablog.com. Yeah, just put it on the fundablog. There is, there's a link. Sure. Yeah. My, but, like, my Tumblr mostly now is just a bunch of reblogging and shit. But, like, yeah, but I have a couple of things in there. Um, but, like, it's just, yeah, like, it's just been really fun. It, to me, this is the side of fandom that I love. And I guess that's the thing, is that I remember being really into fandom when I was younger, and, like, Buffy and Roswell and, like, that was kind of like the time when people were talking about stuff and then I kind of got away from it because some like fandom Buffy and Angel were my Vietnam bitch (laughs) no Roswell Roswell was my Vietnam actually because like the whole when Tess came and and, yeah like Roswell was like because also because the show stopped being very good and then also Tess came and then Liz it was a whole drama anyway um, I've always been a shipper. I don't give a fuck. I've loved romance since I was 14 years old. I don't care. You can call me a girl. That's nice. Fuck you. You know what's fun about that is that romance is better than everything else. Anyway, moving on. So, like, um, like, the point is, is that, yeah, like, so, like, I was really, like, into fandom when I was younger. And then I drifted away from it because, you know, I got older, but also because I started to have negative fandom experiences for the first time in my life that were like, mm-hmm. whoa. I'm looking at you, Twilight fandom, that I was literally just Googled because for some reason I read all of those books and I don't know why. I, to this day, I don't understand what happened to me. It was like someone had put crack on the pages and every time I touched a page I got a small high and I just kept yes. having to read it. Yeah. I don't remember, like, so much of those books. And they were terribly, I, I didn't, they really were not well written. I will never defend them. Um, but for some reason I was really into it. And then I remember going into the, t- the Twilight fandom and I was immediately. What was, and, what, what, what was the, what was the writing? Michelle, was that it? What? Twilight writer. Was oh, name? fuck. What's her name? Uh, the Mormon woman. Uh, see? Stephanie Meyer. Stephanie Meyer. There we go. Okay. Um. It would be amazing if like Stephanie Meyer had made a deal with the devil <laughs> for that book so her mo- so she that, so her that mind, every please. time that you read the book it actually you know your brain knew it was shitty but the the, the devil can but no me but that? The, the the book operated on like a QR scanner okay so like the page itself stimulated your your lady parts in a way that made you want to keep on turning the page. No, I don't know what happened. I just was, I, I was at a time in my life, I was working retail. It was a dark time. So hold time. on. So. <laughs> it was a dark time for me. So, Stephanie Meyer creates Twilight, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Makes it and then out. who's Fifty Shades of Grey who rips e. off Twilight? E.L. James. E.L. Yes, and she made a billion so dollars. who is the lesser of the two evils who's the greater who's the worst writer who don't know no, who's yeah who's the worst who's who's the best worst the like is worst? E.L. James like a worse writer copying oh, a worse absolutely. writer absolutely or Honor is it just because her she's copying a worse writer that she's worse no 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 E.L. James's no. writing is fucking atrocious yeah. it's oh, okay. fucking atrocious um you want to know what's crazy is that there's terse original fan fiction a song i can't remember if it's a, it's not a song of ice and fire it's like ice her ice dragon queen or whatever that's her name and then oh master of the universe was the name of the fan fiction mm-hmm. and it's still out there in the universe you can get it you can find it online they tried to scrub its existence from mm-hmm. the fucking annals of history but it's never will be scrubbed and the best part is that she replaced 
She always likes to use the inner goddess. Yes. Oh, th- I, re- I remember. It was amazing. Okay. So in her terrible books, mm-hmm. she always likes to say that um, Anastasia has her inner goddess. My inner goddess was flat out in my vagina. Um, and it's terrible and annoying and I hated it. That's one of the reasons why like, I couldn't, like, I think I read the first book all the way through and then I tried to start reading the second one just because I'm one of those stupid people that's like, I have to finish when I start. I shouldn't do that um, about terrible things. But I was like, I do. But no, I couldn't even get to the second book. I was like done. Um, But I hated it so much. And oh, so when I read the fan fiction, I realized that in the original story that she wrote, the fan fiction that was a Twilight, Edward and Bella alternate universe fan fiction in case you don't know what that is that means that you take uh, um the characters characters and and remove them and remove them from the story um sometimes a little bit so like sometimes you'll just take them maybe like if you have two characters like luke skywalker and obi-wan you'll put them no 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 you'll put them in sometimes it's a minor au so you'll put them in like knights of the old republic storyline instead of like like what if obi-wan met darth revan like shit like that um then sometimes your AU is way out there and you just totally just take these characters and put them mm-hmm. in a completely different place. That's usually modern AU or other kinds of What AU. if Kylo Ren was a coal miner? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a plot bunny. Hey, what Kylo if... Ren, how are you? <laughs> what if Kylo Ren was a coal miner? Uh, a searing vision of Trump's America. <laughs> um, anyway. We've been forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's why he's evil. Don't let the past die. <laughs> Make the past great. Again. Make the past great. Again. No, Kylo. No, that's irredeemable. No. Anyway, so so this was a modern AU. Crooked Ray. Crooked. <laughs> that's not even her lightsaber. <laughs> I want to see her birth certificate. Her parents were nobody. Nobody's nobody. What the fuck? Yeah, What's she hiding? Like, they, they, she Jawa? She Jawa? Is she a Jawa? If she's a Jawa, the cheetahs. The cheetahs. Terrible. <laughs> anyway, um, so in her modern AU of Edward and Bella, which is exactly like Fifty Shades of Grey, um, so who cares? She, instead of using inner goddess, it is even better. She uses subconscious. Oh. My subconscious did this. Now, if you know anything about language oh, or writing or the subconscious, you can't say my subconscious because it's subconscious. Like, you're not, as a character not or aware. a human, you're not supposed to be aware of it. Every now and again, we might say, subconsciously, I must have thought this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we say that because we think when we have, like, an epiphany or something happens later on, we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. we're like, oh, maybe subconsciously I thought that. But you don't write in a story, my subcon. Oh my god! Like I just sit there. Listen to me. Here is my problem. I don't know who edited her books, but that's the real devil. He's the villain. He is the villain. Whoever fucking said, and that's the thing. All they saw were dollar signs because apparently this fan fiction was so popular that she was like, "I'm going to bleed," and she like made so much money. You know what? And fucking, you know what? Bitch hustled, bitch made a ch- got her check. Yeah. I can't hate on that bitch. But you know what? She's fucking up because right now she's got money. She could take Ronaldo Sucks 54's <laughs> movie and she can produce it right now. But she won't. And we can all watch him crumble like Danielle and she's Benson. <laughs> but she's too afraid. She's too greedy. No, no, no. She's a greedy bitch. And I rem- and then here's the thing. No, there's so many comp there's so many um fucking arguments that people had with her online about like you can't do this you can't sell this this is plagiarism and she's like i don't care i like my like, exactly i'm not gonna listen to you <laughs> she did and she's block, a fucking block. she's a fucking millionaire now we'll be so, talking to my lawyer i guess it's really like it's fucking hysterical because i even had in my old live journal which doesn't even exist anymore man my live journal my live journal. All the live journals are still alive. 
your emotions will never die. They're horcruxes for all of I humanity. I don't remember my fucking live journal name anymore. Um, uh oh. Oh, was it like Morrigan? Yeah. Was it? No, it's one of those. Shh, d- that would never. be horrifying if all the live journals became like horcruxes. Oh, God. For a teenage. If all your emotions. internet social media became horcruxes for your emotions, you're fucked so bad. Yeah, you'd suck. It'd suck. Uh, like you could never die, and you'd just be like stuck in some horrible hell dimension. Like, ah, kill me! I'm stuck in a Nicolas Cage gift! No! Oh. Yeah, like every angsty fucking MySpace post I ever made. I think my MySpace went away, though. But does anything ever really go away? Like, god damn it. Anyway, so, E.L. James is the worst, but she's a millionaire. So, I don't know. I don't know. I think, you know what? A lot of people think that the world began to end. You know, like, the, a lot of people, a lot of people are like, 2012? Think, 20, like, no, no, a lot of people think, a lot of people like blame, a lot of people think it's like the whole, you know, the drama with Trump and all that kind of, I, I think that she is part of the, the downfall, the downward spiral the of our society. The down of America. Of our society. When she was allowed to become literature. And look, and I, this is the mm. problem, it's like, I don't begrudge anybody for reading it, I don't begrudge anybody for liking it, you know what, we can all like shit that's guilty pleasure, it's just more the fact that, like, she just, uh, I just, I, just so badly written, and it was so lazy, like, to this day, you can pick up copies of that book, and there are typos, and, like, Jesus. improper, like, they literally just finished that book in a night, like, <laughs> Put inner goddess instead of subconscious. Jesus Christ, you dumb bitch. Like, replace, like, replace. <laughs> like, replace and find. Like, it just, yeah, you can still find typos. You can still find misspelled words. You can mm-hmm. still find terrible sentence structure. It's just so shoddily put together. But it didn't matter. But what's funny now is maybe I'm being too negative when I say it was the down spiral. Because nowadays, you can find a million copies of E.L. James, Fifty Shades of Grey, in a million thrift stores. People really kind of just, like, got over it. They came and threw it away. And they're making that third movie, and I don't think anybody even cares anymore. And that's the best part, is that they made a movie out of Fifty Shades of Grey, and it was worse than the books. How can you have two... Do you understand? Let me tell you something right now. Not everyone will agree with me, but I don't care. The Last Jedi was sexier than the entirety of... That Fifty Shades freed the second one, right? Because I actually kind of fast forward through it because I wanted to see the sex scenes because I'm uh-huh. a pervert. And I wanted to like, you know, I wanted to be like, ooh, is this hot? It was not hot, narrator said. Mm-hmm. Like, it was not. It was so unsexy. And I think that the moment when Ray and Kylo looked at each other in that fight and illuminated their saber penises was far more erotic and sexy and when they touched hands and when they like sat there breathing at each other that was far more erotic and sexy than the entirety of that 50 shades movie and that is sad because it's supposed to be a movie about fucking sex the people those those two actors are phoning it in like both of them are good actors but they do not want to be there they don't, I don't even know if they like each other, whatever, they are both phoning it in, okay? Like, if you had good chemistry for your two actors, right, you could honestly make a two-hour movie for Fifty Shades that was just gobbledygook, because if you really wanted to see these people fuck, you wouldn't care, but I don't want to see them fuck. They do weird things, like, it's very awkward and off-putting, so yeah, so that's E.L. James's legacy. Like, off putting. <laughs> like, off putting! That's her legacy! Off putting! And I know she doesn't care because off-putting she's a fucking millionaire. And making money? Yeah, she's yeah. a millionaire. She doesn't care, but it's off putting. And there is actually a whole business now. A lot of fan fictions have been published. And that is very interesting to me. I actually don't necessarily have a problem with it. Some people have a huge problem with it. I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I think. You know, like, I think that if you can make it work to an extent, because, like, especially for, like, okay, let's say Fifty Shades. I don't even technically have a problem with that, because you know why? It's so, the, the AU is different, like, from the actual story. So, really, she just took the characters, and, like, so it's really she just doesn't have, like, she doesn't, she can't 
make her own characters, I guess. Okay. Like, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's going to get complicated in here. Let's move on. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. devoted way too much time to these stupid people. Shut before. up. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk you about... Um, I watched a film on Netflix without you. On the Netflix? Because you have without n- me. no interest in it mm, at I don't. all. I don't. What is it? Um, is so, it Puppy Bunny Circus? I don't know if you ever even heard of the first film at all. So Sean William Scott did a film called Goon mm-hmm. back in the 2000 and whenever. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait, let me get this figured. 2011. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was written by J. Baruchel, the Sorcerer's Apprentice mm-hmm. himself. Wrote this movie. And he produced that movie. And the movie is basically about how Sean William Scott is a typical hockey goon and he gets his dream and finally plays pro ish hockey in Canada. Mm-hmm. And his adorable, you know, a bartender girlfriend falls in love with him, blah. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. Whatever movie. It's mm-hmm. about him fighting. Mm-hmm. But they made a sequel. And J. Bar Rochelle said, you know what? I'm going to fucking direct it this time. Write it and direct it. And they made a sequel. Okay? The sequel nobody asked for. And in the sequel, they decided that after a five-year gap since the last movie came out, mm-hmm. this is like, whoa. I'm going to tell you the whole story. Okay. So Doug Glatt finally became captain of his team. Okay. Is this okay. like an actual team or like a, a team that you... A hockey team. But is this like a fan t- like a, like a Like one of those... A real professional hockey team. Oh, okay. okay. He's captain of this hockey team. Mm-hmm. Okay. He has an eccentric team that was in the last movie mm-hmm. that they all just basically talk about Percocets and, and stuff. Percocet. So then the owner of the team, this asshole guy, mm-hmm. he, his son plays for another team. Mm-hmm. And he's an even bigger asshole. And he's good looking. He's that good looking guy I showed you a clip of. Oh, shit. With a beard. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that guy. So he gets in a fight and ends up fucking up Sean William Scott so much mm-hmm. that he's got to quit playing hockey because he's too fucked up. So now we're 10 minutes into this movie. The star of the hockey film is not on the hockey team anymore. OMG, what a tragedy. Mm-hmm. So now his girlfriend is pregnant. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they're married. And now he's got to get a job in insurance. But he's basically just left in a closet all day to, like, file things and track data. And he hates it. He just hates his life. Now, the coolest part of the first movie was that Lee Schreiber was, like, the bad guy. And he... I'm boring you to death. I love it. And he was a super badass hockey fighter. Okay. Okay. Now, in this movie... <laughs> this <laughs> is Pause. Where, I'm boring you to death. I love it. I love it. It's about to get interesting. Mm-hmm. So, in this universe Jay Baruchel has created, old hockey players can compete in what is called the Bruised and Battered Hockey League. Mm-hmm. Which is basically just a fight club in a hockey arena for old hockey people to beat the shit out of each other mm-hmm. in front of the fans. Mm-hmm. And fans cheer them. And Leaf Schreiber loves fans cheering him, even if he's not even playing hockey, mm-hmm. even if it's killing him inside. So Sean William Scott is like, please teach me how to play hockey again. Mm-hmm. Teach me how to fight with my left arm since I can't fight with my right arm anymore because of his medical condition that keeps him from playing hockey. Okay. Okay. Click. So he battles through the odds. So it's they like Rocky. get yeah. They, so wait, Lee Schreiber was in this movie? Yes. But he's too good looking for a movie like this. He has like a mullet and like a horrible mustache oh, in this dear. movie. Never mind. He's like a dirty old hockey player. It's the best. It's the best. He's fantastic. He's super cool. I'm so kidding. the movie twists and turns. Uh-huh. All right, and Sean William Scott gets back on his hockey team. Mm-hmm. They end up kicking the douchebag guy off the hockey team. Oh. There's a whole, you know, intricate back and forth mm-hmm. with who's on what team, blah, blah, blah. Who's on first, who's on second. Shit ends up that the whole time his wife is just, like, super pissed. Because mm-hmm. she's like, motherfucker, you said you were going to stop playing hockey. And all you've done is continue to play hockey 
and continue to endanger your life unnecessarily when there's a child about to come out of me. Okay? So he's super pissed at her. So finally they're at like the most important game of the moment. Mm -hmm. And he's got to fight this bad, good looking guy. And he can't beat him. He doesn't think he can beat him. He's getting the shit beat out of him. Like, this whole movie is just... It's like people getting It's just shit people out. spitting blood at ice. Oh, my goodness. And people getting knocked in the face. Like, Jay Baruchel was really into Fight Club. Yeah. And only the parts of it that were people blood. spitting up blood. So, that was his favorite is shit. this like Jay Baruchel's idea of, like, what he thinks hockey should be? It's just people spitting out their teeth. That, that's what he thinks is cool in hockey. Yeah. Is people, like... Pushing each other and then getting in fist fights. No, and being just, like crazy, crazy you know bloody. What I'm, thinking about? I'm just thinking about my favorite viral video ever of that father watching his kid play hockey on the sidelines and just yelling, Get off the sidelines! <laughs> he says something like, Get off the sidelines! They're playing, and he hits the glass partition and just Bonk. shatters! Uh-huh. And then they're just like, Good job, Steve, or some uh, shit like <laughs> Wait, no, it's like, way to go, Ron, or some uh, shit, and it's like, uh, oh my god. If ever, that, I mean, that is just, com- like, it's some comedy you just can't write, ever, but I would put that in a movie, because that's how funny that moment was. Anyway. So, climax of the movie, in the final game, Lee Schreiber and him are now on the same team, playing hockey again one last time this young guy fucking destroys Leif Shriver mm-hmm. fucking is about to destroy Sean William Scott and then he realizes he goes he realizes and somehow they dramatically tell you this story in his face <laughs> which is really the art of the film mm-hmm. he realizes that I can beat this guy right now if I punch him with my right arm but the doctor told me that if I punch, if I ever punch anyone ever again with my right arm, I will never play hockey again in my life. Uh-oh. And That's I will drama. be debilitatingly injured. So he decides that with that one punch, he will both satisfy his team by doing one last heroic act for them and satisfy his wife by debilitating himself to the point of being like partially crippled, I imagine. And he punches the crap out of this guy and, like, rips his arm out of its own socket. Oh, my God. And that's the dramatic conclusion to Goon, The Last of the Enforcers. That is terrible. On Netflix. I gave it one thumbs up. So because that's, Netflix good or bad? has switched from the star rating oh, system thumbs. to a simple thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't like down. that thumbs thing. No, I mean the joy. I don't think that it's complicated enough. Sometimes, Things if are mad. I watched a movie, like... Santa's sleigh and it's a horror movie about a murderous Santa I don't necessarily just want to give that a thumbs up I don't want to encourage Netflix to like (laughs) I I love it when gift givers stab me in the throat but at the same time I don't want to totally give it a thumbs down because it's fun enough that maybe it made me laugh like it's just I wish that they came up with a better system because I'm just so worried that Netflix's idea of a thumbs up is, well, I know what you want. You'd like 55 more Sant- Christmas murder movies, please. Yeah. And it's like, that's not what I want at Netflix. I would, I would love it if Netflix could just, you know, watch my face with a camera while I'm watching the movie. Mm-hmm. And whatever face I had most often during the movie, create a gif of that reaction. As my review for the film, <laughs> so that when you want to watch a movie, it's just you scroll through a, a, your faces. a bunch of pictures of faces like. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. But what if your face is just like when you just watch a movie, you're like, <sighs> it's just like five guys sleeping. Yeah, I just don't care. Yeah, yours would just be a bunch of you sleeping, <laughs> you fucker. We can't watch a goddamn Netflix movie. And that's one of the reasons why I don't watch Netflix movies with him because I'm like, babe, let's watch the movie. Oh yeah, sure, let's do it. Click, get the popcorn, snuggle up. <sighs> Five minutes later, it's ridiculous. I hey. can't finish a fucking thing. Hey, hey, they don't pay me to lay down. Or watch movies. They don't pay me to lay down. <laughs> Shut up. Do you have any uh, final thoughts? You want to talk about anything else? Um. 
that's a good concise length? I think that's a good concise length. That's what we've been doing. Okay, what's the title? I need a title. Please. Tom, uh, let's search for a title. If you want to pick a funny title now. Pick a funny title. So talk about 50 Shades. 50 Shades of sh- No. Fan. Oh, no. Uh, uh, I don't know, Steven. You come up with titles. Tamil's Billion Dollar Booty Sack. Fan friction. <laughs> Why is booty? <laughs> that would be something you would say. Fan fr- Oh, do you have a? Uh, mm. Are we? Are we gonna give up the? The the fucking the depressing segment of the podcast? We're we gonna keep it going for twenty. Oh okay. shit! Well, I didn't yeah, even. I haven't depressing? even been thinking about it. Maybe because yeah. I haven't been wanting to think about anything depressing, guys. <laughs> um, depressing. Donald Trump is still the president. Depressing. Oh, that could just be the ongoing. Yeah, depressing. No, no, what was the name of the segment? Wait, I, I, I just. I need to go lie down in the dark for a while. Is what it was called. There we go. Yeah, uh, depressing. Um. Uh, okay, I'll end this on something happy. Okay, but I'm gonna do one more depressing thing. Depressing. Donald Trump is still the president. Okay, go. Still depressed. <laughs> still, still the president. Yeah. Um, so last night was the Royal Rumble. We watched it up in this crib. And we saw Ronda Rousey show up at the end. It was cool watching uh, all the women in the Royal Rumble. And that was very fun, yes. Lots of classic wrestlers mm-hmm. come back. Uh, it's kind of weird that WWE decided to, like, after, like, 30 plus years of making Asian people the joke of every Royal Rumble <laughs> to allow two Asian people to win two Royal Rumbles on the exact same night. It'll I wonder if that's a also a joke on them. Or I not. hope not. I hope it's not a joke. No, it's not a joke. They're very They're great wrestlers. They're great wrestlers. Very They're very talented. I think that, you know, sometimes you gotta shake things up. I think that there's just a... They're both Japanese wrestlers, right? Like, the yes. Japanese wrestling is so fun. And so enthusiastic, you know, like they have a really like cool perspective. Yeah, they're, they're, they're they're very aware of yeah. like presentation much more yeah. than than an American audience gives thought towards. I have been your host, Stephen. Sleeping around this podcast has been Duke, Zena, Morty, and Rusty. You may have heard Zena breathe sniffing as we laugh too loudly. Um, remember to. Tweet us at Vundablog or at Vundacast. Check us out on Instagram at Vundablog or at Duke Xena Life. Um, also, make sure to go to radiate.fm on Mondays where you can listen to our sweet podcast episodes uh, as they're broadcast all over the interwebs mm-hmm. on radiate.fm. Uh, Danielle, any uh, final thoughts? For the children? Um, no. No is Sorry. spelled K N O W. Yeah. And I want you kids to know this and remember this. I'm your host, Stephen. That was Danielle. And remember, kids. <laughs> Booty sack. I just let it linger a little more <laughs> in honor of of the lead singer of what's it? God damn it, what's her name? I forgot her name now. No, I thought I thought of touching Memorial now, but I remember her name. Oh no. This, she had a song Linger. Uh, the zombie oh, Cranberries. Sh- uh, yeah. What's her name? Uh, it's very Irish. Irish Siobhan? name? Siobhan? Siobhan? No, it was not that. The name of God. <laughs> Sinead O'Connor no. is the most Irish name Dolores in the world. O'Rourdon. O'Rourdon. That's pretty fucking Irish, too. Thank you. Okay, Dolores O'Rourdon is just as Irish as Sinead O'Connor. Rest in peace. We're going to fucking hell now. Rest in peace. Just end this podcast. You never know how to end them. It's just endless. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, you know how to end it. Booty sack. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder cast? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I wonder.
Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. You're listening to the Wundercast. What's up, everybody? This is Jason David Frank, Free Ranger. You're listening to Wundercast. Subscribe to the Wundercast.